Bear with me on the low camera angle. I'm going to move you over here to look at the screen in just a minute. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Calvin. I'm in the street, and today it's a Friday night. Friday night, August 8th, and what am I doing on a Friday night? Of course, screwing with computers. So, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu 14.04 on my computer. I made a short video about how uh, OpenSUSE wasn't quite cutting it for me in terms of stability, and I really, um, here's the deal. Ubuntu is a beginner distribution in Linux, and obviously I'm not a beginner in Linux. You know, I don't use Arch and Slackware and, and FreeBSD and things um, on a daily basis. FreeBSD is not Linux, I know. But even though I'm not a complete Linux, you know, guru, that doesn't mean that I'm not knowledgeable in the Linux world. You know, I use OpenSUSE, um, I use Fedora, I use distributions that are a little bit less stable than beginner distributions. So why would I use Ubuntu? Well, Here's the deal. I'm trying to make a freaking animated series, okay? I'm trying to make a machinima animated series called Displaced. You'll see it on our entertainment channel in a couple weeks. I'm trying to make this series, and Audacity keeps crashing on here, and also Minecraft keeps crashing on here. And I know it's not the computer, because the computer's a great computer, and I've been using it for a while. Um, and there's just a lot of small bugs um, on... OpenSUSE that are keeping me from doing what I need to do. So, uh, like I discussed in my last video, I love OpenSUSE, and I, I even love other distributions like Fedora. Uh, I, I'm not going complete noob on this. I am installing Ubuntu because I want the best of the best. I want the, the most stable experience possible. Because on this computer, not, not just in my life in general, not for all my computers, but for this computer specifically, I want to install the operating system, and I want to forget about the operating system. And I want to be able to edit videos, I want to be able to record videos, I want to be able to upload videos, I want to be able to, to do anything I need to on here uh, without worrying about the operating system. Um, and, of course, if I'm going to be using Linux, Ubuntu is the most stable you can get. Okay, yes, I can install Debian stable, I can install CentOS, but those are server distributions. In terms of a distribution made for the desktop, Ubuntu is the most stable you can get. Um, so that's why I'm using Ubuntu. Am I going to stop doing techie things? No way. I will be getting a laptop soon, and Arch Linux is going on that. It's a used laptop. Um, it's my sister's. I'll talk about it in the next video, but for now, um, as soon as these files are done, we're going to go ahead and pop in the install disk for Ubuntu 14.04.1 LTS. All right, and here we are, the uh, very emotional last shutdown. Time to go. Sorry, OpenSUSE. You did a pretty good job for me. So turn off computer. There we go. And here is the disk I will be using to install Ubuntu 14.04 LTS. Uh, as you can see, I screwed up the um, version number there, but that's all right. Also, this is a netboot disk, and you will see that in a moment. So let me turn on the computer and pop the disk into the drive. And now it's in the drive, so let me do F10 for the boot menu. Okay, and DVD writer. Of course. Ubuntu. Um, so we will we will select install. Wow, it it it's not blue, it's purple. Can we can we get some actual color here? Any could please? What the heck? That is not blue at all. That is purple. Like I'm trying to. All right, there you go. Now you can see the purple. That was really weird. I've never seen the camera screw up that much. All right. English, United States. As you can see, we have to uh, do some of this stuff in text mode because it's net boot. It does not have the full GUI. Um, we'll actually be pretty much installing in text mode, but that's okay. This is how you install Ubuntu from the net boot disk. And what net boot means is I actually didn't have any DVDs, 
and a CD is not big enough to hold the normal um, install image, but a, a CD can hold the netboot image, and then the netboot image basically starts up a very, very basic uh, Linux you know, system and then downloads the installer components. So i7 workstation. Continue. United States. And of course I want the US mirror, no proxy. All right. So as you can see, all of this stuff, normally you would still have to install some of this stuff, but what it's doing right now is it's actually downloading um, core components that I didn't have. So right now all it's doing is downloading the installer basically. And the netboot disk is good for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is a smaller download. Of course, you do have to wait longer and you have to download more every time you install Ubuntu. So if you have to install Ubuntu on a computer with slow internet, or if you have to install it over and over and over again on a lot of different computers, you would want to use the regular version. But um, if you're just using this for one computer or one computer at a time, the netboot version is good because it is a smaller download in itself. You can put it on a CD rather than having to use up a DVD. And also, you can install any variant of Ubuntu you want. You can do normal Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Edubuntu, Ubuntu GNOME, which should really be called Gubuntu. All right, full name, uh, Jacob Kaufman. Username, Jacob, password, use the password, yes. Encrypt my home directory, not right now. Uh, I'm getting the time. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. No, I'm not in Chicago. I'm in St. Louis, but, you know, I'm in the Chicago time zone. Central. Pretty exciting. Uh-oh, I'm wondering, I hope the partitioner is able to do what I need it to, because I kind of have a, an odd partition layout that I use. Um, if it's not able to do what I want it to, I'm sure I can after we... Uh... Ooh, all right, all right. This is going to get a little scary, guys. All right. Um... Oh, no, this is this is fine. All right. So the OCD Vertex, that is my SSD. So we are going to use that as an EXT4 journaling system. We will format that as... Um... Oh, yes, format it. Mount point will be slash. That's the root. Mount options, defaults, label none, reserve blocks. Okay. Uh, typical usage, bootable flag on. Okay. So that will be that. And then our 1.1 terabyte EXD4, we're not going to touch the NTFS partition, but we will touch the EXT4 partition here as another NTF or another ext4 partition mount it as slash home all right bootable flag off done so that's exactly see this is good um some distributions don't let you do that in the installer so, for instance OpenSUSE has a very robust installer but it wouldn't let me do that I don't think. Oh, no, OpenSUSE, I think, did. Linux Mint might not have. But yeah, that was very, very nice. See, I've got two different hard drives on my computer. I just wanted to get the one hard drive or the one SSD um, for my root usage for all my programs and things, and a partition on my other drive for slash home usage. And then, yeah, we've got just leave the other primary partition alone because that's what a lot of my files are stored on. All right, so finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So just to review, we will format, yeah, both the ext4 partitions, not the ntfs partition, all right? We do not need swamp space. Write changes to disk. Yes. Do it. Do it. All right, installing the base system. So as you can see, it's not just installing, it's also retrieving. So it's having to download everything before it installs it. That's that netboot thing uh, kicking in, but that's fine. 
Um, not sure how much space I have on this camera. Well, I know exactly how much space I have on this camera, but not sure how much I'm using up by the second. So I'll go ahead and let you guys know when this is done. How about that? Um, so for the time being, yeah, all you have to do is sit back. There's no, there's no uh, slideshow like there is if you use the full version. The net boot just has progress bars. So I will let you guys know when I get to the next thing that is not a progress bar. All right, so we're nearing the end of base system installation. Of course, right as I start the camera, we start downloading large files, but... So we had a bunch of configuring, we had a bunch of unpacking, now we have a little bit more retrieving, installing, retrieving, preparing, configuring, running. Yeah, it started going slower right after I started the camera, I'm sorry about that. Like I said, I think there might be another progress bar or two right after this one. Yep, configuring apt. So apt is our package manager, of course, or the package manager that Ubuntu uses for system stuff. So we will configure that, retrieve all of the files we need. It's really pretty cool that you can like download your operating system while it's installing. So I think it's going to give us another prompt after this progress bar. I'll let you know when that happens. So now the installer is asking us if we want to configure automatic updates on our system. Um, and the options, you cannot choose to install all updates automatically, but you can either manage the system with landscape, which is like a cloud service that they offer, um, install security updates automatically. We're going to choose no automatic updates, but don't worry, I do check for updates often manually on my system. All right, so here's that prompt I was talking about. Now the installer is asking us what we want to install on our computer. Um, so you can choose an Ubuntu server, um, an open SSH server, DNS server, LAMP server. Um, so like basic Ubuntu server, LAMP server, you would cycle those if you wanted a web server, mail server, you know. Um, Ubuntu cloud instance, we've got virtual machine host, um, 2D, 3D. All right, so we've got editing suites that you can have pre-installed. Um, Edubuntu desktop, Kubuntu. So if you want, like I said, Edubuntu, you can get Kubuntu just by selecting that. Now we're installing Kubuntu. Deselect it. We're back to normal Ubuntu. Um, Lubuntu, you can get Mythbuntu, um, photograph editing suites, Ubuntu GNOME. Um, we're going to select Ubuntu desktop and you can get, you know, Zubuntu and everything. All we're going to select is the basic Ubuntu desktop. Um, yeah, Ubuntu desktop is all we want installed by default. We will install other things after, but yeah, Ubuntu desktop. So that should give us a default Ubuntu installation. So it's going to download everything it needs for the Ubuntu desktop. And I'm thinking there's going to be a few more files than that because, you know, the whole operating system we're talking about here. So right now it's uh, preparing all of our X server stuff display stuff because it's been running in text mode this whole time remember so yeah that's more like it 1327 files so i'll let you know when that's done we're nearing the end here just hit cleaning up we just installed a bunch of other packages i saw libreoffice in there like firefox just regular packages so i'm thinking we're pretty close to the end ah installing the bootloader that's kind of important. All right. Um, yes, it is now the only operating system on this computer because I do not do dual booting anymore. Um, yeah, install to master boot record. All right, setting up. All right, system clock is, I guess we're set to UTC, sure. Installation is complete. Continue. All right. See how it says make sure to remove the installation media? That's because in previous versions of Ubuntu, it would eject automatically, but for some reason they decided that it's not going to eject automatically anymore. I guess so that if you don't have a monitor, um, or if your monitor cuts out, then you won't have to wait for the message that says press enter to resume or whatever. Um, I just took out the disk. I'm pretty sure it was trying to boot from it, but I took it out anyway. So this should be fun. Let's see what it does. If it just goes on to the hard drive. Yep. Oh, nope. All right. So that's fine. It was trying to boot from the disk. Not a problem. Starting the computer back up. This time it should detect that the hard drive is the only thing it can boot off of. 
Let's try booting off of a different hard drive. What are we trying to boot off of right now? Let's try booting off of the Vertex. Nope. Let's try booting off of the other hard drive. All right, we just needed to boot off of the other hard drive. That's all it, it just, it just installed the bootloader. Once again, this is purple, this is not blue. This is not blue. That's not blue. That is not blue, that's purple. Why is it, uh, why is it doing that? All right, I don't know why it's doing that, but yeah, um, that grub error, it just put the bootloader on the hard drive that I was not used to booting from. I'll set that in the BIOS options so that it doesn't have issues with that anymore. But as you can see, here we are in light DM is what this login panel is called. So, and here we are in Unity. And, oh, that's nice. A little box pops up that shows us all of our keyboard shortcuts. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely read through that. And this is, oh, there it goes. All right, didn't get to read through it. But yeah, this is this is pretty nice, pretty snappy. Gonna have fun experimenting. I have not used plain old Ubuntu in so long. Um, yeah, this will be fun. For now, that's about all. I'm going to get my system set up now. I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm on the street, and I will see you guys later. See ya.